the show and Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this is an ongoing series with Sue Barnes. She's a medium and a has the ability to tap into the higher spirit. So thanks for being here, Sue. And um, we have a special topic today. Um, what do you want to describe it? Yeah, well, what I do is during the week when I'm in my meditations, I ask spirit for kind of guidance. And the guidance that they gave me for this week was to talk about um, thoughts or things and natural law, because many people don't understand how natural law works. And these are positive ideas. And at this time, they are. I mean, I could say all kinds of things about what's going on in the world, but the best strategy they're telling me is to be positive at this time and to bring positive messages. Right, so what, What? okay, so let's give people a positive message. I mean, what do you feel? Um, no, I feel that this is a great, I mean, this is me speaking. I feel that this is a great time of change when we have an opportunity and we should look at it as an opportunity to change many things that we have going on in our lives. So this is a moment to reflect and think about our futures and where we are today and where we'd like to be. And we can create whatever we want through creative visualization, through our minds, through our thoughts. And let's talk a little bit about how thoughts are things though, or the power of thought. I mean, when you think something, you're actually creating the reality about it. That's right? correct. So That's correct. We're thinking negative things like, oh, this is awful, all that. It's going to reinforce the reality that you see. So it's like your thoughts are the mirror of reality, but the power human beings have is that they can control their thoughts. That's the incredible part that makes us different from animals, I guess. Yes, and you know, it's our intention and it's our ability to have free will to be able to decide what it is we want and what we don't want. So we have the power to change the world, to change ourselves, to change everything. I mean, I think um, people have to realize how powerful their thoughts are. It's like everything that exists around us is a manifestation of a thought. I mean, Correct. trees, na nature grows on its own, but sometimes you have to plant a tree. And, and so there's, there's the natural world, is that what you called it, the natural world? And then there's the um, human overlay of it. Well, there's natural law, but natural law affects both the, the nature and human beings. And there are certain laws that are evident. And there have been many new age people and philosophers or uh, people who have tried to write books to talk about, um, think, you know, think about making money or this or that or the other thing. But the natural law is really basic and very simple. And the natural law is what we think and what we do is what we get. So if we think positive and happy thoughts, our life will be smooth. If we think negativity and fear, that's what we're going to get. Okay, but one thing I wanna to add to that is people don't even know what they are thinking. What people are subject to is this self-talk, this negative talk where they're, they're beating up on themselves and they're, you know, repeating what their parents have told them and they're not even do it, doing it consciously. So they keep reinforcing a scenario. So part of this is making conscious the unconscious uh, thoughts because they're going through our mind. Well, I mean, it is. And this is something that when I started studying media um, and the ecology of media and technology, I realized very early on that we have certain ideas embedded in our heads that we aren't even aware of. 
I mean, we have certain concepts about race, about time, about everything, about the way we live our world that has been kind of ingrained into our minds. And what happens with the media is the media tells stories and the more you tell the stories, the more people believe it. So um, we hear these things, we don't know what the truth is because we never really yeah, hear them. I mean, we have, well, besides our, our ideas about the world, we have ideas about ourselves, which is even worse. And right. if you ask someone who they are, they say, I am this, I am that, I am that. Anything you follow I am with, whether even that that's your job or your gender or your religion, then you are conformed to that I amness. If we just keep it as I am, I am that which I am, then you become the free floating eternal essence of being that's undefined and unconfined. Well, so yeah. We, yeah, go ahead. Oh, because. We say, well, the saying that we all have as spiritualists about the ego is the ego is easing God out. So yes, when we cling on to these egotistical types of things, um, we're clinging on to ideas. And I think it's really funny that most people will tell you that they hate something about someone that it's a habit they do, but that person does it themselves. So. Yeah, we very rarely look at ourselves and we're so easy to blame others and we're so easy to say, oh, I hate that. Well, sit back and say, do I do it? You know, is this something? Well, if, you, if you hate something about another person, it's a key to some aspect of, it's a reflection. So, because everything is a mirror of our consciousness. So, I mean, we all do it, but if you really are disturbed by someone's behavior, that's that's a clue to your subconscious mind. True. Now, do you know the whole psyche thing where people uh, go in and undo uh, subconscious, unconscious beliefs? Have you worked with that at all? Because no, I haven't. I've just consciously tried to um, work with my own, I would say, subconsciousness. I mean, there, there's um techniques that you do to try to alleviate the clutter i mean that's the first one is to get rid of the clutter in your mind that constant dialogue that's saying oh you should do this you should do that or i need to do this to, you know get rid of that and start to think more clearly when i say clearly i work on not thinking at all and then from really, that you don't, it's you don't hard think at all it's hard. No, it's really hard not to think at all. And then see, the thing is, you have to clear your mind and not think at all if you're going to do mediumship, because you have to get rid of the clutter in your mind to allow the spirit messages to come in. Right. We have a question from Eline being, what must I do once a negative thought comes in to turn around into a positive thought? Well, I would say, and then he wants you to answer, is that once you notice that you have a negative thought, like, oh, you did this again, you, you, you know, you call yourself a name, then just turn around and, and, and give yourself a positive thought. Thoughts come into us and leave us. They're, they're like listening to a radio. If you hear a negative thought, you have the power to give yourself a positive thought. What do you say, um, Sue? It's funny, I have a friend I have a friend who every time he says something negative, he said he stops and goes, oh, God bless me. Or, you know, I don't mean that, you know, erase it. Um, but for me, I think that one of the things that is important is that when you have, you're facing something negative, okay, there's something very negative going on in your life. Let's take this. We, we're all stranded in our homes. Okay, this is a potential negative. Now, turn it around. How can this be positive? Well, for me, it's a positive because it gives me more time to my own work. It gives me time to reflect about myself. In some cases, it gives you time to spend more time with your families. So instead of saying, oh my God, my pets are driving me crazy, which they are, um, 
I have to say, okay, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to pet them a little bit more, or I'm going to love them a little bit more, or I'm going to turn it into a positive type of thing. I think that's what makes human beings so remarkable is that once you become the observer of the thoughts and all you have to do is listen, close your eyes and listen to the monkey mind, then you could pick out some of those recyclings of behaviors and you could work on them. And you might have to force it, but you could say, I am beautiful, I am intelligent, I am um, loving. And you, you could reinforce it even if you don't believe it because there's no reason you should believe those other thoughts either, you know? No, no but I mean, I'm gonna say, okay, there are times when I get depressed. All right, and I'll, I'll wake up, I'll say, oh, you know, I'll realize I'm down and I'll say, okay, I'm depressed. So instead of just wallowing, oh, I'm depressed, I'll say, okay, what can I do to make this a little bit better? So maybe it's, okay, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna eat some ice cream, which I normally don't do, or I'm gonna just take a day off from work, or I'm gonna let, allow myself to be who I am today and not try to fight it. Um, so, I mean, those are the types of things, your realization of where you're at at the moment and where your thinking's at is the first step in turning it around. I also want to say on the other side of that, if someone's depressed and they have a good reason to be sad, that's okay. It's okay to give yourself, allow yourself the feeling. If it's a chronic depression, then that's a habit of thinking and it's something a condition i call those chemical conditions when someone has a habit yeah. of thought and joe dispenza also talks about because yeah. you're addicted to the chemicals of depression yeah what we said to no no you're absolutely right and there are some times when people do need help to try to counterbalance that i'm not saying they don't but being self-aware is the first step and trying to be honest with yourself too. Hey, we're not perfect. We make mistakes, but don't beat yourself up over it. I mean, that's the one thing I did. I decided very early on when I was, was quite young that no matter what decision I made in my life, I was gonna make the decision, I was gonna stick with it. If I didn't like the decision, I was gonna change and do something else, but I wasn't gonna beat myself up by saying, oh, you did this and you should have done that. I never do that. Well, it sounds like you've done a lot of self work, work on, you know, with yourself and um, what's the difference between, you know, cause you're pretty clear in your own state of mind between the state of mind, Susan Barnes and where you're gonna sh go to because you're clear now, how are you more clear in a trance state? If you're already clear. You well, you me? have to understand that I've been trained to allow the spirit messages to come through me. So when I go into an altered state, and it's not always pure, pure trance, but it is an altered state, I allow the spiritual messages to blend with my messages. So they'll use me, and I'm fairly well educated, so they'll use some of my knowledge and they'll enhance it with theirs. I won't know what I'm going to say. I'll just pick a theme and let them go. And so whatever happens, happens. And I trust enough in the spirit world and in doing this to allow them to, to speak. But how do you know it's not this really clear higher part of yourself that's bringing through this knowledge and, and it's maybe not a spirit? How do you know the difference? Because I spend my entire life only working on the higher levels. When you want to only bring through the highest and the best, which is what I ask for and what I pray for and what my intention is, a lot of it's intention. I mean, if I were to just say, oh, I'm going to go and meet a spirit, I have no idea what's going to come through. But if I'm going, I only want to work with the highest and the best. And I live my life that way. I mean, I talk the talk, walk the walk. I mean, I do things in my everyday life to try to make me a better person, you know, the best I can. Of course, we all make mistakes. But um, yeah, no, for example, I don't engage in gossip. 
I don't no, tell I, stories I, about people. You, you never talk about you never talk about people. Well, I'll talk least, about facts with people. You know, if somebody's if I know something like it's for it's it, it's very nice that that there's there's a woman. Okay, there's a woman that I'm not particularly fond of, but I have to give her a lot of credit because she's doing something now with the, with the virus that's very helpful to everybody in the community. So I always, you know, give credit and, and will give thanks to her for that. Um, I might not want to go out to coffee with her, but you know, I give her credit for where credit is due, but I wouldn't go behind her back and say, do you know what she's doing? Do you know what he's doing? And and I mean, it's it's a habit of people to do that, but it's really um, it really lowers everyone's energy field to gossip about people, even if you may not like them. Because if you're talking about someone in a negative way, it it's it someone's going to be talking about you that way at some point. That's true. And, and but it's just as a lowering of the field to say anything negative really and, and it's we're so trained to do that but I agree with you it's it's a practice just try to look for the good parts in people and the trick this is a really interesting trick mm -hmm. um and we all have people we don't like let's be real we don't like everyone okay so the people that you don't like especially if you're having like a particular problem with them what you do is you send them love you actually sit down, maybe say a prayer for them um, or take a moment and say, look, I'm going to send you all, my, all the loving energy that I possibly can. And after a while of doing that, you will find that the other person starts to change their behavior towards you. Right. No, I, 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 th yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely because that because it goes back to the original we were talking about thoughts are things. Right. So. We send negative thought out, it comes back in negative, and, and, and psychically, it creates attention, and it lowers our vibration. Correct. So, but that's not to say that, you know, that's not to say some negative things aren't going to happen, because there has to be challenges within the world, and I like the word challenges. We all have challenges, we all face obstacles, and we have to, because if we don't, we don't grow. And it's through these challenges that we grow. That's why this particular point in time is a very important moment of growth because this is such a big challenge for all of us on every level, on the personal level, on the social level, on the cultural level, on the world level. I mean, just take a moment and look at it and say, hey, have we heard anything about squabbling or war since this has been going on? What is right. the reporting the end of war maybe maybe not the final but hopefully the final end that really we are one planet and one humanity we all have the same basic bodies and we have to um value life and peace and joy and work together as a single planet this is this is sort of what this time is telling us. You're right. We have not heard anything about wars. We haven't heard anything. And, that's... and we haven't heard anything. I mean, think about what the news was before this. But also look at the point when we say spirit has kept, kept telling us that we need to talk about humankind, not human race, humankind. And what we are learning with this uh, virus is that humankind, no matter what color you are, no matter what religion you are, no matter what you are, can get this virus. Yeah, yeah, so it's true. It, yeah, I like humankind. You know, da the Dalai Lama said kindness is a religion. And um, that's, um, I think, maybe the real meaning of humankind. I mean, but I have a question on the chat from the third eye. Um, how do we trust the divine plan when a part of us is scared? I feel so supported, but sometimes feel fear. I want to release the fear and rise into my true faith. Any thoughts? That's the whole thing. Fear holds us back. And I mean, 
with fear, all right, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen to you? I mean, the worst thing that's gonna happen to somebody is that, okay, they won't be able to pay their rent. They won't have enough money to eat, but you know what? Everybody else is gonna be in the same boat. So what we need to focus well, that, on that, yeah. is today. Yeah. I mean, today, if we focus on the now, we can't think about, okay, yeah, I could lose my house. I could lose everything. And then I'd have to start all over again. And you know what? That's an opportunity. If I got rid of all my no, junk. That, yeah. But that's the, not the worst thing. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Finish uh, what we were saying. The worst thing? I mean, what is, I mean, with fear, I think that's what I do is think about what's the worst thing that could happen. Well, and, you could end up in a hospital with the virus. And, you know, that would, you know, where that goes. That's, that's. That's yeah, but then, okay, if we say this, if you're a spiritualist, the worst thing that could happen to you is death, okay? That's the worst thing that could yes, happen. That's what people fear. That's the behind every fear is that fear. Yeah, but once yes. you, as we realize that death is just a transition into another state, we know that the personality lives on. So death is not a final thing. Um, and I think that a lot of religions try to scare people. They scare people saying, okay, if you're not good, you're gonna to go to hell. Well, what is hell? Hell is a mental construct. And if you look at things and you say, no matter can be created or destroyed, we realize that our essence, our spirit, our souls must go on to something. They're not destroyed. So, so if you get, on. Yeah, no, if you get over that fear of death, then there's no need to have any fear because there's the eternal essence of spirit that always exists and what do you fear then i mean right right i mean right that's what you're saying that's what i'm basically so, saying yeah no i think that's great i think that's something the spiritualists probably know better than anyone else um so what do you want to do as far as now going into a trans, uh, tell us what your process is. Okay, my process is to say a prayer and I'm going to, um, I'm asking spirit to give us some words of encouragement and enlightenment and I'll say the prayer and then I'll, I'll sing myself into, into a mild trance because I need a transition period. And then who will you be talking to or through? Who's going to be? I'm never a hundred percent sure. There are I, I trance different people. The song I use, I there's a spirit named Francis that helps me go into trance. Um, she probably won't come through. Um, usually lately it's been the philosophers headed by Socrates. Um, also there is a spirit named Gordon who might come through because we're talking about spiritualist philosophies and he was a spiritualist medium. And um, my guide hasn't come through in a long time, but my guide sometimes um, will come through. His name is Christopher. But I'm and what's the difference yeah. between, between trance, what you're going into, and channeling? Because it's, it's very, but you say there's a difference between what you do and channeling. Um, yeah, channeling generally, try, somebody can say, yeah, I'm going to go channel Michael, or I'm going to channel Joe, or I'm going to channel Pete, and they tap into that one energy source, but when you're trancing, you're just kind of tapping into the divine and allowing whoever would like to come through to speak, so we have more than one person that comes through. But it's not whoever you want, because you want to keep the energy high, I mean, there's a lot of beings out there you don't want to talk to you know so you see how do you, how do you keep them away how, yeah what you do keep you do? them away with through intention through the fact that you say uh, first of all i do a prayer i only want the highest and the best to come through and i'm only working on these higher energies and the lower energies stay down here where you're working up there so um i have no fear the a negative energy will come through because they're not on the vibrational level that I'm trying to work. They won't be able to actually come through because no. I they understand. Have, 
Right. I never have. And all the time I've been doing this, I've never had. I mean, only once did I ever have a negative trickster energy come through, and that was before I knew how I do had any training. But you can also feel the vibration of the being. So you're if you're feeling accelerated and you're loving and open, that's the higher levels. If you're starting to feel like weird and contracted and you know shut down, then you know that. So you're too trained enough to know, feel into the difference. Yeah. Then. yeah, yeah. And there is, I mean, I don't completely black out. So there is a little kernel of my own consciousness there. So if things start to feel bad, I would probably stop it. But if feeling good, when you start to feel good, is there a point, and I know you want to start to trance, but is there a point where you could eventually in your evolution merge with the um, beings that are coming through so you're unified in consciousness? Yes, I've experienced that. And there are some people, I'll have to get their names for you, out on the west coast of Canada that are doing this, that are studying divine love. And I have had the feeling of divine love and it's a, a sensation that um, I can't describe. You just know it's different and you're merging with the spirit world and they're bringing love to you on a level that, that you've never felt before. So. Is that the base of enlightenment? Do we want to, I think, I would think we would want to live, live in that merging of that higher space with the divine love essence. Well, I don't think you can stay there all the time. Um, it's a feeling and it's a feeling that you should keep in your heart at all times, but it's, you know, being on an altered state is not the ideal situation to live in. Well, I think though, this is my opinion, the frequency of the planet is changing. That's more honored. And I think we might come to a point where we can all live together in an altered state. Well, that's my okay. opinion. Yeah, I mean, but it, then it depends on, on, on how altered a state you're, you're referring to. So, um, right. no, I mean, I could right. live in an altered state of mediumship all the time. All right, well, okay. Just looking for more chats. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Go ahead. Whenever you're ready. So you're setting the intention. Do you want to tell us what the intention is again? The intention is for the highest and the best messages and to give us some insight into natural law and thoughts or things, which is part of natural law. And I just say, dear father, mother, God, thank you for bringing us together at this moment in time and space and allowing us to hear the messages from the spirit world. We ask all of the guides, teachers, and helpers to come and work with us today and bring forth healing and consoling messages to all of those who listen. And we are humbly grateful for all that you do. Amen. I come to the far dim alone. While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And he walks with me and he talks with me And he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Blessings to you all. We come today to bring you words of enlightenment and words that you sometimes forget and need to be reminded that your thoughts are things and that all you do in your life is what contributes to all that you get back during your existence. For the time, your time on the planet is not that long and it is one that should be used wisely. 
one that should be thought of as a time of enlightenment, of a time to explore, of a time to learn. Many of you get into habits that do not allow you to continue to grow. You are like a plant. If you do not get the right fertilizer, the flower will not bloom. You will not be able to reach your full potential. So it is this full potential that we ask you to consider. Consider your thoughts, consider your actions, for all of these things create repercussions in the world that you know of. And remember, yes, it is a world that is constructed by your thoughts and your ideas and all of the things that you believe to be true. But we in the spirit world are here to remind you that all you know may not be true. There are other options, there are other possibilities. So when the phenomena occurs that you do not understand, realize there are things you may not know and things you may not have learned yet in this lifetime. So don't dismiss it and don't be a naysayer. Embrace all that is possible for it is understanding that all is possible that helps you to come out of your own shell, of your own lack of wisdom about the way things work. There is a natural law and you cannot break that natural law. And that law tells us no matter whether it's money or happiness or love, that what you ask for and what you do in your life is what you bring back to you. So if fear is what you have in your life, fear will come back to you to haunt you. So remember that. Remember that the things you think, the things you do, the things you say, most importantly, have actions, have life. The words just don't disappear within a few moments. They actually linger within the thought waves, within the atmosphere and they are alive. So if you have said something that is negative to someone, you may want to apologize. You may want to reverse your course and let the spirit world know that it was not your intention to be that way. For it is your intention. What is your intention? What is it you want out of life? Do you want love? Do you want to love other people? Do you want money? Do you want success? Maybe your wanting of success brings you towards failure because all of the other things in your life are negative. So if you want success, you need to think success and think positivity. And no, do not hesitate for one moment to think that you cannot achieve what it is you want to achieve. For it is that positive movement and positive thought that allows you to be all that you can be. That's not to say that there aren't challenges and there aren't moments and obstacles that can come within your path. But look at that obstacle and don't say, it's something I can't overcome. Look at it in a different way. Try to approach it from a different point of view. How is it that you can overcome this one situation? For once you overcome one situation, you can overcome another. And do not fight it. Sometimes we need to overcome situations by flowing with it, by being passive, by allowing it to run its natural course and by not interfering. So think about when do you want to interfere and when do you not? If you are having a problem with a person who said something negative to you, do you immediately fight back and continue the negativity? Or do you let it pass and say, it's their problem, it's their situation. How many things do we take on within our own lives that are not really our situations? They belong to someone else. So we need to say, what is mine? What is not mine? 
accept what is yours and take personal responsibility for your actions. And if you have committed a negative action, try to turn it around into a positive because there are always two sides to the coin. And the side that you look at is the side that you will receive. So think about yourself and your life and maybe spend this time doing a little soul searching. For we know, we know that within each and every person is a soul, is a spirit energy, is a life force that allows us to be as spiritual as we want and allows us to be as happy as we desire. So desiring that happiness is the way to go. And those who even have nothing or have found that they've lost it all through some type of catastrophe, realize that the most precious gift of all is still theirs, their life and their soul and their ability to move on and be better people. I, I have a question. Um, uh, this whole idea of thoughts and things, if you say, I need something, I need money, I need love, I, I need this, I need that, you're not going to get the thing you need because you're stating need, so you're just going to get more of needing. This is what seems no, to be no, true no. from what I Money, especially money. If you're on a spiritual journey, the money will come. And so you don't say, um, I need, I would say, I desire to have money. And in my desire to have money, I'm going to do things to help acquire money. And sometimes that's spending money. Sometimes spending money is how we make money. Um, and we think of money, but we can't think of money as just give me, bring me money. It has to be about your own personal need. And the intention is, my intention is if I had a little more money, life wouldn't be so hard. I want an easier life. I want things easier. So yes, think about making it easier for yourself, but it's not just the money. What are the other things you can do in your life to bring around financial resources? I mean, is it getting some, I know you people have all kinds of food banks and situations where people give food. It is, is it a matter of someone giving you what you need more than I need, you know, a million dollars? What is it you need? You need enough to live and survive on. And you will find that if you spiritually ask and pray for these things, they will come. It might not be as much money as you want, but you will survive. Well, I was looking at the other side of that. I was going to continue saying it's not about needing, but if you feel as if already are abundant, if you feel if you feel you're loved, if you feel all the things you desire, if you feel it even beyond desire, then you bring that to you because the reality you're you're creating is being emanated from the feeling of the present moment. That's what I yes. would add to what you said. Yes. So feel as if it is. Yeah. Um, yes, and that's another thing. If you think of yourself as being poor, you're going to be poor. If you think of yourself as being rich, you're going to be rich. Right, exactly. So um, anything you could say about what people might think uh, or what you feel from your perspective the future may look like in a positive way or any way? I mean, first, what is your perspective? What level of consciousness are you talking from? And then what do you think will happen? Yeah. There are many different levels of consciousness and many different philosophies that teach us about what consciousness is. At this point in time, man does not understand them all. And I'll use the term man because that is what I'm accustomed to. I'm not using it gender wise, but we know that that humankind Humankind does not understand all that there is in philosophy. And so you keep growing and changing 
And sometimes your science will come in and change the different things. But those of us who speak from more of a spiritualist type of philosophy know that what we seek is what we get. So if you seek the riches and you seek the goodness, you will get it. But if you seeking things and think of yourself as being poor and say, oh, poor me, then you will be in that condition. The condition you think right. is the condition you will be. So that's what we're saying. The power, we have the power to change thoughts. We first have to notice what they are and how we're talking to ourselves. That's the best creation of reality. How are you talking? And you're usually not conscious because you're usually repeating what you've heard your life that your mother or father told you and then you incorporate them in yourself. So the power to understand the self and shift the self does shift reality. So yes, Correct. thank you for that. Yes. Um, anything else you wanna leave us with as far as what you see or the future, the, um, the short-term future of the world and the country and people's states? If you all have the ability to begin to shift your consciousness, and shift your awareness towards one of working together cooperatively, you will find that there will be more harmony within your planet. However, that's not to say that there won't be earth changes and changes that go on, but together as a humankind, you can overcome all that is put in your path. Yes, I see a very positive outcome. I mean, yes, it's tragic in many ways, but it's also an evolution to something new is possible on planet Earth. Yes, and it's also developing more of the ability to listen to the spiritual side of oneself. Those who have altered their consciousness are able to hear these messages without going into too many altered states. Their wisdom of the spirit world is one that is revealed to them on a daily basis. And it's not a magical thing. It's just a daily occurrence and normal like eating breakfast. Well, that's the one thing about this time. The psychic space seems much clearer and more easy or to connect with these other realms. Would you agree? Yes, and with these connections, you may find, be finding yourselves connecting with other realms in different ways that you have not imagined. Right, this is good. Any final words from any philosopher that you might be talking to? Just blessings to you and try to stay as positive and healthy as possible, for it is having the idea that you are healthy at all times and positive that will keep you in a good state. If you are fearful of getting this type of virus, you will receive it. If you are not fearful, you won't. God bless you. Well, thank you. Sue. Um, I just wanted to also add that, you, you know, staying positive is great, but also acknowledging what is. We don't want to um, override the present. It doesn't mean we have to fear it or be negative about it, but I think we have to stay in touch with reality because in a way, reality is not what's out there. It's how you feel about what's out there. It's an inner sense. So this is why thoughts are things and why thoughts create reality. Yes, but this is also how we, as a ray, as, a, as humankind, if we change the way we think, we will change our reality. Yes, I totally agree. When you were in that altered state, um, were you more conscious than normal or the same or um i was aware of a shift 
Um, I think Gordon came through towards the end to talk a little more about the philosophy. There was a shift in personalities. Uh, um, someone online wanted to ask you if you could help them um, with more clarity and talk about your personal readings a little bit and how you work and how people find you. Oh, you can find me by going. I have a website. It's uh, www.spiritartgallery.net, not com, net. And I have the Spirit Art Gallery, which is where I work out of. And we have Spirit Art, which you can see already. Um, I also do readings. Um, I am a medium, uh, but I can do psychic readings. It depends on what people want. As a medium, I tap into relatives and bring through loved ones and messages from loved ones. Um, you know, but lots of times people want a little more um, spiritual advice or they want advice on more psychic types of things, you know, their life and stuff like that, which I can help them with both. I do both, but I will let them know which way I'm working. Right. You do. What's that painting above the plant that looks geometric? I think that's very interesting. Uh, Is that you? Is that one of yours? Yes, yeah, I like that. It's a tetragrammaton. It is a spiritual symbol. Oh, it's, like the anagram, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a spiritual symbol that I drew in the sky. So all of these are your paintings? Yes. Wow, the very uh, different styles all around. So you've been painting for a while, huh? Yeah, my work has varied, um, um, and I have to say my work, even though I didn't even realize it, has been spiritual all along. Um, so I've worked, I work realistically and I've worked abstractly. Um, most of these pictures here um, have been a new piece of work I've been doing where I've been doing automatic painting, where um, what we do is I, I close my eyes, I put like three colors of paint out in a big brush, and I just paint all over the canvas. And then I find an angel in the painting. And then I bring out the angel. So this is a like class. Where we, what? I'm just wondering where the angel would, how does the angel, how do you look, how, where's the angel in that painting? Oh, that one doesn't have an angel, but here, this one. Um, I'll make it. Okay. Let's see if I can do Thank it. Thank you. Move me. Well, that's okay. I see. Okay. Uh, if you can see this one, yeah. Um, there's a face in it. That yeah. face kind of just evolved. It happened very quickly. I wasn't even thinking about painting the face that way, and it happened. So, um, yeah, they come. They come. This one, the one, the white one here with the long fingers, that came as a sketch, which was very random. So I try to work with. Um, coincidence with um, spontaneity. And when we do the spirit art, what happens all the time is that we allow our subconscious minds to bring through messages that we can then interpret on the conscious level. Right. Now the angel comes through because um, you're getting out of the way and the subconscious mind manifests that form, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, a materialization in a sense of spirit in a sense yeah i mean i do in some of my other work when i do the wax type of work um we do get a little bit of physical phenomena happening because i do read with these cards and in the cards um the uh i see actually see images of loved ones in the cards and sometimes these images physically resemble the people and of course, this is all done without thought. You know, it's all done spontaneously. So it's amazing what the spirit will put into the pieces of art. Right, um, one more question here. How do you stay focused on service to others instead of service to self and ego? Uh, I want to purify my intentions. Well, it does start with intention, but what do you say? Well, I mean, part of it is um, in any situation, and, and I, I'm probably been guilty of this, I think a lot more about others at times than I do of myself. I mean, 
it's like, you know, what do they need? What do they want? Um, and it's really not focusing on yourself. I mean, I'm not a big name medium because I haven't gone out and done a lot of promotion and do it. I've, I'm letting it just kind of happen naturally. Um, you know, so some people will say, you know, if you say, oh, I want to be a medium, I'm going to go out, I'm going to make lots of money. That's ego speaking. But if you say, I'm going to be a medium, and as a medium, I'm going to provide service to other people, that's a different way of thinking. You know, I don't, I don't, will never take money from anybody until after a reading is over. Because if they're not happy with reading, or if I haven't done my job, I won't charge him. But somebody else who's like, right. oh my God, I need the money, you know, then that's a different motive. So you have to look right. at- I think some people, yeah, some people are naturally selfless and some people, I think we all are. Some people have had to learn how to survive and that might make them more ego-based. And um, I think we can overcome that with awareness. Um, you also, uh, well, we should wrap up, but you also teach mediumship, right? Yes. Right. So uh, get, tell people again how to get in touch with you for private readings or some of your teachings or your spirit you can, art. You can touch with me uh, on my email address, um, susanbbarnes at gmail.com. There's a B in the middle. Um, you can get in touch with me that way. I do teach classes for the Afterlife Association. Um, I teach a spirit art class and I teach a mediumship class. They're free um, twice a month for them. And um, you can find that on Victor Zamet's um, website. But my website has all of my contact information on it and it's you know got some of the art and things. I will be reworking the art the website soon, but yeah. And what's that website again? www.spiritartgallery.net. And Sue, if you don't mind me saying, is speaking to us from the spiritual center of uh, the U.S. probably, Lily Dale. <laughs> Uh, that movie, No One Dies in Lilydale, was um, an HBO special about that. So, um, Sue, for spending some time here with us today, and maybe we'll do some more dialogue at some point, okay? Okay. Take care. Blessings. Thanks again. Uh, thank you. This is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. Thanks for doing today. Coming up in about an hour, I have a hands-on healer, energy healer, that's going to be doing some live transmissions of that. So stay tuned on youtube.com slash new realities. Thank you, Sue Barnes, for everything and talk to you. Bye.